Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kiki and Kibitz. It's Mary, and I'm here with this week's edition of 90 Days and 900 Seconds, Season 10, Episode 1018, Happily Ever After. And guess what? It is the season finale. After 18 episodes that seem to last forever, this is the longest season of 90 Day ever. We have come to the season finale. And guess what else? No Gino and Jasmine on this episode. Yay. If I was going to give this episode a grade, I would give it a solid C. And um, let's set 900 seconds on the timer and hop right into it. So I'm going to start off with Sam and Citra, the only normal couple, in my opinion. Okay? So it's the morning after the wedding. And Sam was really hoping that he was going to get some booty. But guess what? They're having a family honeymoon. He wakes up in the morning. Citra's in bed with her sisters. He is sleeping in a bunk bed with Herman on the top bunk. Okay? Citra was not having it. They're in an old farmhouse, and she's afraid of ghosts or serial killers. Okay? She was picturing, like, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre outside the old farmhouse they were staying in. So she was like, no, I'm not sleeping in this room alone. We're going upstairs and we're all sleeping together as a family. And so even Herman found that highly amusing. Herman's like, you know, usually uh, your wedding night, you guys spend it together. Instead, you spent it with us. You guys had a family honeymoon. So Herman, you know, just wants to remind Sam he's leaving and I'm leaving my daughter in your care. Okay, Sam? And he basically tells him, you need to step up and be a man. You need to deal with your issues like a man. No alcohol, no drugs, nothing like that, Sam. Okay? I'm giving you my daughter. You're marrying my daughter. It is time for you to step up and be a man. So now two days after... Okay, it's two days after wedding day. And guess what? Sam is finally going to be able to release that pipe that has been backed up. Okay, so Sam is lying on a bed. There's rose petals all around and he's wearing ash chaps. Yeah, you heard right. He's wearing ash chaps. Okay, Citra is not wearing a cute lingerie. She's wearing like, like just regular pajamas, okay? And I don't blame her because having the cameraman in the room, okay, while they're trying to get romantic, I would have been like, dude, get the fuck out. Like he was in there for way too long, okay? So Sam is worried. He's worried about this whole court diversion thing. Is he gonna have to go to jail? So he asks Citra, you know, um, if I have to go to jail, will you stick around? I'm really worried about all this. And Citra's like, you know, let's just think positive. You're my husband now. I feel what you feel. So we're a team. We're going to deal with this. And let's just think positive. So they flashed up a little message that two days after Sam um, submitted his paperwork for court diversion and they would have to wait six weeks to hear the judge's decision. Um, pretty much, Sam was um, sentenced to a court diversion program, and he didn't have to serve any jail time. So, a little spoiler about that. Okay, next, Clayton and Anna Lee. I told you she was just running on Hispanic time, okay? My mother-in-law, she's incapable of getting anywhere on time. She's Guatemalan. She always shows up everywhere, at least an hour late, okay? I have a lot of Puerto Rican friends. I call it Puerto Rican time. If you want them somewhere by 8 o'clock, you tell them 5 o'clock, and they may get there by 8, okay? So I do. Annalie was just running on Hispanic time, okay? She's an hour and a half late to her own wedding, but at least she showed the fuck up, and that's what really mattered, okay? And um, she says, I know his jealousy may be an issue, but I love him and we're going to work, we're going to work through this. I found it very sweet that Clayton's dad, yes, 
Clayton's dad that we haven't seen all season walked her down the aisle. That was very sweet. And um, her vows brought me to tears. They were very sweet. Brandy loves her, loves Annalie, loves her some Annalie. And like she says, Annalie loves her, her mana loca. Totally agree. Okay. But it's so great to see that Brandy and Annalie formed a bond and that the stripper didn't ruin everything. So mom agrees that she needs her own space. Okay. She agrees that Clayton and Annalie need their own space. It's time for her to move on. She can't wait to get her own apartment, put um, plants everywhere, make it her own and get the fuck out of the closet. I found it so sweet that Clayton, who doesn't dance, period, learned a traditional dance from um from the section of Peru that um Annalie is from. And he performed it at the wedding. And Annalie was like, oh my God, I'm so touched. He's so cute. I can't believe he did that. Okay. Now, I'm glad that they got married. But I really don't believe it, her when she says that he's her baby and he's her favorite person. I think she might be exaggerating just a little bit. But um, once they got married, like you could see, you know, the glow on her a, a little bit. Okay. Because during this whole season, I was even debating if she liked him. Okay. But when they got married, you know, she was glowing. And I'm like, okay. Hmm. So next, she's going through their wedding gifts, okay? Because this is a couple of days after the wedding. She's going through their wedding gifts. And she's like, you know something, baby? I'm going to give you a wedding gift. I'm going to tell my father everything. Everything. Right down to one married. And Clayton's like, oh, shit, you are? And he's like in shock. And she's like, I just want to do this to make you happy. I want you to be happy. Smile a little bit. She's like, smile. And Clayton's just like, I am happy, but I'm just in shock. I can't believe you decided to do this like today. So she calls her father. Her father's like, hola, mija. How are you? And, you know, and she like the way she was explaining it, she kept dragging it out. She was giving this poor man a heart attack. Okay, first, she took forever just to tell him that she had a boyfriend, not even a husband, not a fiance, but a boyfriend. She's like, come here, Clayton. Clayton sits next to her. She's like, daddy, can you see him? And her father already looks highly unamused. Okay, then she broke the news and she flashed her ring at the camera and her father was like and she's like daddy are you okay and he started to cry he was so upset he started to cry okay and this was dad's response to the news He didn't want to deal with it. He said, fuck this. I can't believe my daughter just dumped this on my lap. I walked away from the camera. Her sister comes into view. Her sister's like, hola, you really upset daddy. I'm going to go deal with daddy now. Bye. And hangs up on her. Now, Clayton is happy and relieved that the news is out there. Okay. Annalise, like, my father is difficult. He's difficult when it comes to relationships, but once he gets to know Clayton, hopefully everything will be okay. She's sad because she didn't want to upset her father like that, but she's also relieved, you know, that this whole conversation's over with. And um, thankfully her father didn't kneel over of a heart attack right there in that Zoom call. So now let's move on to Rob and Sophie, okay? But I want to do the two crybabies last. Rob and Sophie, 
there in Santa Barbara getting married. Okay. And um, even though she wishes that she had the full 90 days to, you know, uh, more than 90 days. Okay. She says 90 days is way too short. She wishes she had more than 90 days, you know, to figure things out with Rob. But hey, she's going to do this. Rob gets champagne everywhere. He's excited to get married. And now it's the morning of their wedding. Rob is excited. Sophie is sick AF. And she is wondering if her body is telling her, bitch, run. She has a sore throat. She feels like shit. And it's hard to be a beautiful princess bride when you feel like shit. But she pulled it off, though. She pulled it off. She looks fantastic, okay? Claire feels like, you know, Rob is doing that husband material. He could use a kick in the butt. Meanwhile, his friend is like, yo, Rob has done a whole 180 since the last time I seen him because uh, before he wasn't even sure if he was going to marry this chick and now he's all into it. Okay, so his sister really came through with planning the wedding, okay? She did a fantastic job at doing this beach wedding. Props to Rob's sister. Okay, props to Rob's sister. Now, it's time for the ceremony. Rob is standing there with the officiant. All the guests are there, okay? Sophie and Claire get there. Sophie's like, oh my God, I feel like I'm going to puke. And they're trying to walk down to the beach. Now, mind you, it's not a straight path. It's not an easy path. Uh, Sophie and her mom got lost trying to walk down to the beach, okay? Sophie got lost to her, on her on the way to her own wedding ceremony. You know, it kind of fits her personality. Anyway, Rob is looking and Rob is like, where the fuck are they going? Is she like abandoning me? Is she going to be like a runaway bride? Like what the hell is happening? But Claire and Sophie figured out which way to walk. And she walks and she meets her groom. And, you know, the ceremony was touching. Rob cried. Part of her, um, part of one of the things that Sophie said that she loves so much about Rob is that she's at peace with him. I'm like, really? We didn't see that. It didn't look like that, that you guys were at peace. But hey, whatever you say. But Sophie, if you think you're at peace, more power to you. Guess what? Claire caught the bouquet. She's like, yay, I'm getting married next. So cheers, happily ever after to them. And I wish them all the best. And we will see their journey because guess what? They're another couple on happily ever after. Yeah. Okay. Now, moving on to... Nikki and Igor. Give me one moment, guys. I need to grab my tissues. <laughs> I can't believe he broke up with me via text. Oh, my God, I've been sending him money, and I've been taking care of him. I've been a sugar mom. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He broke up with me. <laughs> Meanwhile, she has makeup on, lashes, her hair done, and everything, okay? Apparently, she got the text from Igor just as she was about to sit down for her confessional, okay? And she fucking got hysterical. She was sobbing in the arms of the producer, okay? Now, that text that Igor sent didn't sound like it was coming from him. Okay, it sounded like maybe Dylan from Love After Lockup hooked him up with his AI because it did not sound like 
Igor at all. Okay. So basically he told Nikki, I can't do this anymore. Have a happy life. See ya. Okay. And Nikki is like hysterical. Okay. <laughs> so she's at home. Okay. And she is so upset. She can't get out of bed. All the curtains are drawn. And her mom comes over. So she called her mom. And her mom was like, she was so hysterical. I didn't understand what she was saying. So I went, I came over here to see if everything was all right. Nikki's in bed, full makeup, hair done, lashes and everything. I can't get up, mom. My life is over. <laughs> She hasn't called the attorney to call off the K-1 visa yet because we never know. Igor could change his mind. <laughs> I'm just glad it's the end of the season and it's bye-bye Nikki, okay? So now, Ashley and Manuel, another crybaby, okay? Now, he's getting a haircut. And she's doing her hair, and all she could think about is the rain, okay? Manuel, he's like, whatever happens, happens. If it rains, it rains. If it doesn't rain, it doesn't rain. I'm getting married today. That's all that matters, okay? So Ashley does a quick tarot card reading the morning of her wedding. And basically, even the tarot cards are telling her that this is going to be a shit show, okay? So you might as well accept it for what it is. It's got to be a shit show. So anyway, he goes into the bedroom to get ready. She gets ready. Her mom is like, you need to calm the fuck down. You are too crazy. You are shaking. Calm the fuck down. By the way, the guy that was driving was not an Uber driver. That is her brother-in-law, okay? She starts flipping out in the car because they are literally driving into the storm. Okay, she sees this huge black cloud and they're literally driving towards it. Okay, she starts with her ugly crying in the car. <laughs> her brother in law was literally laughing at her, like, look at this fucking crazy bitch. Okay, her mom's in the back seat, like, calm down, please, calm down. Whatever spirit guides are out there that she follows. Please calm her the fuck down before I smack her in the back of the head on her wedding day. Oh my God. Her mom, her mom is like, I can't just, just stop it, Ashley. Stop ugly crying. Ashley's like, <laughs> her brother-in-law is cracking up at her. Her sister is like, what the hell? But they get to the beach. And guess what? It starts pouring. Just as she's walking towards him, it's fucking pouring. But hey, they got married. That's all that matters. And she said, it felt nice in the rain. It felt like we were washing everything away and starting anew. Listen, if I spent God knows how much on a wedding dress, got my hair done, got my makeup done, got all fancied up to walk down the beach. Okay. First of all, I wouldn't be able to deal with the sand and all that shit getting in my dress, but that's a whole nother story to walk down to a beach and then for it to start pouring rain and I'm getting soaking wet in my dress. No, I wouldn't be a happy bride. Just saying. She says rain is good luck. We shall see if rain, you know, was good luck to start off their marriage because guess what? They're returning to Happily Ever After, which starts March 17th. So that's all for now with this recap. And in other Happily Ever After news, in case you guys haven't heard it, heard it yet, it's Monday, February 26th, and Michael is apparently missing from Angela's house. I did a video covering it. Please check it out if you haven't already. But Michael has apparently been missing from Angela's house since Friday. He walked out and no one has seen him since. So all jokes aside, I hope Michael is okay. But I hope it, all it was is that he decided he was getting the fuck away from her. But all jokes aside, I hope Michael is okay and nothing happened to him. Thank you so much for watching me, guys. Please subscribe if you don't already. 
hit the like button and share my video with a friend or 10. Next week, it'll be part one of the tell-all. See you then. Bye, everybody.